Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank the Danish Minister for Equal Opportunities for inviting me to take part via this video message in today's conference under the Danish Presidency of the Nordic Council of Ministers. I welcome initiatives such as the report launched today, which aim to shed light on the somewhat uncharted phenomenon of hateful and misogynist online speech, specifically on social media. We need to understand, but never excuse, misogynist attitudes so as to tackle cyber violence against women, including online sexist hate speech, more effectively. Cyber violence and hate speech against women violate women's rights and often open the door to further psychological, sexual, physical and even fatal violence against women. They also deter women from participating in political, social and cultural life. This is why states have a duty to step up action to combat cyber violence and sexist hate speech against women. The Council of Europe Convention on Preventing and Combating Violence Against Women and Domestic Violence, the so-called Istanbul Convention, specifies what measures are needed for this purpose. Firstly, prevention is the key. The Istanbul Convention calls for a set of preventive measures, including arrangements to encourage private companies and the media to set self-regulatory standards. As to the education sector, it is essential to foster human rights education, promote gender equality and question stereotyped gender roles affecting both women and men. Children should also have access to comprehensive sexuality education. Such measures can empower all children and prevent disrespectful and violent behavior and the exclusion and stigmatization of others. A second vital part of the response is the protection of victims and punishment of the perpetrators of gender-based hate speech and violence against women. In particular, the Convention requires states parties to prohibit stalking and sexual harassment and protect the victims of such crimes. Third, this is not just a women's issue. We need to ensure that we have men on board in the fight for women's rights and gender equality, particularly younger men. It is crucial, therefore, to get men involved in awareness raising campaigns promoting gender equality and to highlight the positive role they can play in this respect. I welcome the increasing number of initiatives throughout Europe moving in this direction. I would like to conclude by drawing your attention to the recent Committee of Ministers' recommendation on preventing and combating sexism, which provides a roadmap that can be usefully implemented by all member states of the Council of Europe to address the issues discussed today. I am sure that today's event will bring useful new insights into the best ways of putting this recommendation into practice. I wish you all a fruitful and successful event and look forward to learning more about its outcome. Thank you.